Hey, it's Jason with incredibly useful exercises for the double bass volume 15, hybrid number three. And I will get this camera on my head here. Uh, hope you're having a good week. It's uh, about 82 degrees in San Francisco. That is a terrible angle. That's why I make sure to check before I flip over and get a screen grab of my iPhone here. Uh, so yeah, again, 82 degrees. I was debating about keeping the door open or closed. I don't think anybody minds if I'm playing in my immediate area, but uh, I feel a little self-conscious. So I'm not, I'm not going to open it, but I will get this going. Uh, and Modacity, my practice of choice, and I'm actually trying out today a bow by a wonderful bow maker in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, named Rodney Moore. Uh, this bow, and I'll maybe just do a quick before we get going, just explain. Um, this bow is made, and of course I can't I'm blanking on the name of this wood, but it's a Mexican uh, wood, uh, more sustainable wood than Pernambuco, which is traditionally what's used in bow bows. This bow, which you've seen on the other 14 videos of this series, is made of Pernambuco. This is by Baron doling a uh, very nice bow i think it's about five thousand six thousand maybe i think that this is somewhere in that price range so higher end bow um but i really like the sound that this has been pulling and i'll get my tune rosin get set here on modesty i'm gonna put a little rosin it it was certainly in need of some rosin this is leatherwood bespoke rosin i've gone back up to the 40 percent hydration i've been using 30 percent, but now of course it's hot today so maybe i uh moved up too soon i also randomly i put my colstein base bit back on to show today, but I think I'll take that off. Um, I really only use that on gigs, uh, so, but I could use it at home. Um, yeah, so this bow, here's an example of a bow with not quite enough rosin, but it's easier to put rosin on than take it off, and it's hot today. So one stroke at a time is my motto. Um, yes, okay. This rosin doesn't leave much residue. You can see right here, or I hope you can see, there's just a little bit, oh goodness, I need to clean my strings. Um, not just with this uh, Ohio State base camp rag, but, okay. So I'm likely to put a little more rosin on. As we go in this session, uh, I should definitely check my intonation. Since the temperature's moving all over the place uh, this week, she's good, as long as it's green, I'm happy. Oh. I got it. And I could, with as long as for me within a couple of cents. Again, if it's if it's a smiley face, uh, good enough for me. Okay, we will start. I think this is the end, so I got to go back to the beginning of hybrid number three. Uh, here's what we're going to see today. Again, we start with our traditional silence. Then we got centering, glowing tones, chompers, tetrachord warm-ups, disco, four note progressive scale, three note progressive scale, quick and dead, string crossings, finger replacements, fourth position expander, sixth position harmonic songs, six thirds, trills, trampolines, basketball, glowing tones, and then silence again. Woo, that's a lot of stuff. So I built this routine with a little bit shorter time for each one of these. Uh, exercises. So we will start with our traditional weird thing for YouTube video of 30 seconds of silence. Uh, it's 2 p.m. here, to, uh, which is a little later than I've done these the last few weeks. Um, but uh, oh, I don't know why that matters. <laughs> but I, I practiced these pretty consistently last week, uh, this volume 15. I didn't on the weekend. I was working on a new piece on Sunday. Uh, so this is uh, kind of waking my brain up and seeing what exactly is going on in here. But this is just your traditional. I've done this every single video. Centering, we're starting with feet and knees. So we feel my feet and their connection to the ground. I let myself move from side to side a little bit just to make sure nothing's holding tension. As many bows as I need. Knees. I feel like I'm slightly leaning forward into the base. Connect with my hips and connect back down the chain. So feet, knees, and hips, I'm feeling them all. I like this bow. Uh-oh. 
Jason, you can't buy this bow. No more bows for you. You got to get better at bass first before you buy a bow. And then I just focus on my breath as I play the C. Maybe plug a G. Just to make sure I'm staying on track. Lower back. Shoulder blades. Ah, wow. I'm feeling a little more relaxed today than normal. I don't know why. I went on a run with the DOGs uh, today, so that could have something to do with it. Uh, anyway, uh, breathe as we play the F sharp. Neck. Can I move my neck to make sure it's face? Face muscles. Then breathe again, focus on your breath. Right shoulder. Keep going, note by note, right elbow. And then I'll zoom out just for, so I don't have to keep zooming in. Uh, right, now we're going back down, right wrist, right fingers. Focus on the breath. Now left shoulder, connecting it to my back, left elbow. Left wrist, left fingers, give them a wiggle. Think about the breath, body, arms. Ooh, that almost timed out perfectly. And breath. Focusing on the breath, thinking about centering. That's a major thing for this, these volumes, and it's a major thing for practicing for me in general. Okay, glowing tones, another great exercise um, that hopefully my Zoom H6 will pick up. Again, just listen to the notes as I play short and I listen to my bass ring. And Dennis has what you should be hearing if you're really in tune, and if you're not in tune, you can hear something like this. Or wait, I'll go more out of tune. There, a, a sad non-ring. That's, ooh, there we go. That is really in the pocket. Next note. There we go. Now open A. Nice, tighten this bow. These, this bow and I are getting to know each other, so. Ooh, I hear that. That very high D harmonic. That should be a B, which I am hearing. Ooh, that one. That one sings through. Oops. I'll go out of tune. I'll go back in tune so you can hear it. Open D. You can hear those. Those really well. That's this one right here. Those really sing through. Then E flat. I sometimes have a hard time getting this one. I have to make sure I don't mute the G string. What? I'm not going to try to sing that. <laughs> why, did I, why did I try? There we go. Now. This is one of the ones that I have the hardest time getting. The F sharp. We should be hearing a C sharp. Which I'm apparently not getting today. Okay, that's weird. I'll have to practice that with the camera not on. And open G. Oop. I might need to raise my strings. You're hearing a little buzzing. There we go. There's the harmonic. Now, A, B. D, E, A. Oh, I love that. It's just a great awareness exercise, and it's a good keeping you honest intonation exercise. Okay, chompers. So we are practicing um, this kind of motion. The point, exercise and conditioning of an accurate, quick and strong. Left finger action in the lower positions for building endurance in the left hand and arm for the exercise of placing the fingers with the rotating forearm motion this kind of thing, rather than a finger motion, or what I like to call a typing motion. Okay, I talked through a lot of that, so let's, here we go, so.
good. And I am good. I love when I tell myself good on these videos. Uh, was it good? Good. I mean, I feel like I'm getting better at it. So that's what's important because it's 82 degrees, a little water break. Ah. He is passed out. <laughs> you got a lot of exercise today. Okay. Uh, great. So, chompers, yeah, I'm going to give myself a good rating on that. Charge core warm-ups, I like these things um, because the humidity today, these might be a little more work. And I still, every time I film one of these videos, I think I've got to get that guitar uh, fretboard stuff that makes your hand move more easily because I'm getting uh, some friction built up here. But that's okay. Okay, so here we go. Tetrachords. And thank you to whoever... <laughs> few videos ago, uh, helpfully put down the tetra chords I'm doing here, wrote them down in the description because I always forget what they actually are in terms of modes. Okay, here we go. slow down if I want to just, if I'm paranoid about my intonation, and I generally am paranoid. I think that's healthy paranoia, at least for me. See, so I'm just taking a little more time. Ooh, wow. <laughs> that's what happens when you take a few days off. so close but there's so many exercises in here i can't fall behind or i'll be here all day we will be here all day okay disco put the bay the, the bass down the bow down um and this is just classic 70s ah disco lines i in my hand orientation by the way what's this for um shaping and strengthening of the left hand frame in the lower octave for the strengthening and conditioning of the fourth finger muscle the abductor digiti quin I've never tried to pronounce minimi. I've never tried to pronounce that. Uh, I'm assuming it's this uh, between the fourth finger and the wrist. Oh yeah, this. Okay. Um, for yeah, for the accurate tuning of octaves. Yes, it is good for all of those things. Here we will go. There's a harmonic you can check. Wow, I'm having intonation issues today. I'm always trying to get this one secure before and then adjust the top one. Okay, here we go. sharp that's right c sharp d d sharp or e flat c sharp d e flat f wow that does strengthen that muscle yikes that tired me out okay that plus heat okay get a little oh, do a little stretch mm. I'm extending my arms above my head. Ah, get a little water. Ah, think about lengthening, standing nice and straight. And next exercise is format progressive. Okay, all the way up. Um, 
Why? For the exercise and conditioning of a fast, accurate, and powerful left hand finger motion. For the exercise and mastery of precise tetrachord tuning. So it's cool how he's he's uh, laying these out. We did the Mark Whitney tetrachord warm up earlier, and then this is tetrachords going up and down the bass, and like it says, four note progressives. Um, so I'm going to do this with a drone. And I will, I'm not sure what tempo I'll play, and I may vary it as I go. And I might vary the Boeing, too. I just don't know. But sometimes I do have a plan. Um, but I think it's okay to kind of improvise as you go sometimes, too. I'm just not in love with. Oh, yeah, that's why. Just a little, my ears. Yeah, I think I was just a hair flat. I guess I'll know when I listen back. <laughs> I'm going to do two slow now. I might hang out on one for a little while then. Which is separate bows, and again, lots of work to be done on that one. I've been doing it 30 years, and I'm still I'm still working on it. But uh, I'm gonna the I just gonna try to stick to this timer I set up. Okay, three note progressive, same idea, but just doing three notes. And again, this one, you, the last, the next bar, it ha is still in the position of the old bar, if that makes sense. So here we go. <laughs> Just realized I forgot to turn on the drone, but that's okay. Maybe I'll turn the drone on for the way down. mess up the fingerings. Not messing up the pitches, but that's okay. Exercise. Um, it's interesting. Um, my wife was. We were, I was testing this bow, and the, and and my bass and another bass over the weekend with my bow and it's and uh, these two basses. And it's funny to my ear, this bow sounds darker. My wife says it sounds brighter. Um, and it's just interesting how your perceptions can vary so much. Um, even yeah. So anyway. I guess I'm, I don't know why I shared that, but there it is. Uh, okay, quick and dead. Uh, the, the asterisk is when you put down the new fingers, you're anticipating the finger change. And uh, I should probably have done this the whole way because Dennis says it better than I do. But quick and dead. Okay, why? For the exercise of quick and independent finger placement. For the ex exercise of targeted relaxation of unused fingers. Oh, yeah. So everything that's not being used, I'm trying to be dead. I guess that's what we call it. Quick and dead. So you're trying to be snappy when I put it down and then just let everything relax, it's not in use. Here we go with A. Oh wait, I forgot the thing, I gotta, I almost had this memorized, but not quite, so. Which is hilarious, because it's so simple, I should have it memorized. Center. We 
always go back to the center. And then B, we're going to put the finger down on that asterisk. So the third note, it's going to go down. Okay, here we go. Uh... centering and now it's going to go down on the first note so here we go uh, oh. cool exercise Oh, and that timed out almost perfectly. Okay, string crossings for the, again for the sake of time. I will. Oh, I gave myself a ton of time, but I think I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do uh, just to make not make this overly long. All of these variations. Uh, the why again. I'm trying to remember to share this. Why for the exercise of efficient and powerful string crossings in every part of the bow for the exercise and conditioning of the ab ad adductor. Oh, I should practice these words before I did it on film. Uh, polysis and abductor polysis uh, muscles in the right thumb. Uh, the most important muscles that transfer natural arm weight in the bow. I'm not going to try to even point to they are because I I'll have to think about that and what I'm doing exactly. But what I know I'm doing is these and and um, I'm just going to play through them uh, in the... <laughs> I'll do them in the middle today. I was going to do them maybe at the balance point, which on this bow is about here. But I think I'm going to do them in this area. So I will need to use a bit more torque than I would if I was at the balance point. So even though it looks like it's not much difference, it's there's enough to have to uh, change the bow, me bow mechanics. Okay, here we go. A1. Wow. Almost screw that one up. And then you can repeat it those three times. I'm just going to go on for the sake of time. A2. Now it's the same thing. So that it's obviously the same thing on, on these pairs of strings. Now we move down to the low strings. I might slow it down a little bit just to make sure I'm grabbing the string effectively. Trying to stay relaxed and as Dennis always says in these centered and just kind of thinking about using my whole arm um, uh, but as, as in as fluid a gesture as possible so B1 is on three strings <laughs> So you, uh, yeah, hopefully it's capturing in the camera, but I'm, I'm, um, my arm is moving on different. I have to move my arm to different planes. These two strings, I don't have to move my arm up as down, up and down. I can't talk up and down as much, but the, the three strings, there's a little more of this kind of action going. So now B2 is on the lower three strings. Same thing. And then we got C1, um, which is again a three, and C2, which again are three strings. And just starting on the lower note now, uh, think of it in three, four. What were these at? Four, four. That's what I thought. Where's my brain? Okay, here we go. C1. Uh. feeling like my first finger and thumb are doing are like my bow trigger and the weight of my arm so this is like piloting the arm and the 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 uh, the weight is coming from back in the arm these three fingers are mainly along for the ride for me but I know there are different ways to approach this uh, here is C2 and go slightly slower on these slightly thicker strings always trying to get the fundamental so I, if I hear this I don't want that do want that and it's funny different bow 
it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a learning curve. I have to adjust, even though this is a sweet bow. It just takes me, uh, um, it's funny how those little things, uh, yeah, you can readjust. Here we go, C2. That's it. And uh, Dennis has you do it here, here, and here, but for today. Uh, and that's a great workout for sure. Um, but I'm just going to move on for now. Finger replacements. So this is a fun one. Why? For the exercise and mastery of each note with every finger. Uh, and yeah, it's a cool one. It's um, like this is the, the, the kind of the crux of the exercise is this. So you go like, um, whoa, that was way out of tune. Try it again. And that's sort of um, replacing the fingers. That's harder than it seems. I actually have an exercise. I have people practice where you go like. So if someone was walking by, they just would think you can't play, <laughs> hold a note. But that's, and you can do that down here too. So this is like a variant on that sort of exercise. Okay, here we go. Switch to the A and D. exercise since I got 21 seconds left let's see how let me play that last bit with this bow which may need some rosin um wow that sounds so different to me I don't know it might sound darker that's weird uh, yeah this definitely needs rosin so that's probably an unfair comparison also it's funny this feels so stinking different because if you look at the if you hopefully you can see this look at this area of my frog and this area of Rodney's frog, I love this tall frog because I have my thumb right there and it's just like this nice shelf to set on this doling and I've actually worn it away over the years a bit playing. So I guess I could rectify this. Oh, this is gold mounted, so I don't, I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, so this, this almost feels like there's no clearance right here. So actually, I'm, I'm, uh oh, Jason, no buying expensive boats, no more expensive boats, not allowed to. Okay, so uh, great replacements. Fourth position expander, the exercise that I love to hate um, uh, because I can't play it worth a darn. Um, but and the point for the master of each note in fourth position, the Raboth system, which is just this area of the bass, the exercise and conditioning of a quick and accurate hand extension contraction in fourth position. So the point of this is to develop this extension contraction. So Dennis also says, um, resist the urge to stop if the notes aren't perfectly in tune. There's a difference between exercising a quick finger action and exercising precise tuning. Okay, so with that in mind, and it's, it goes against every ounce of my being to like let out of tune stuff go. Although I'm sure I'm letting out of tune stuff go on this video all the time without realizing it. But okay, so I will shut up and we'll just try this. I'm gonna go relatively fast. Uh, Whoops, I screwed up. Uh, that's supposed to be two. And I think I'm on A flat, B flat, so I'm going to do the one, three. That's supposed to be B. Good. Okay. C. I know it's, I, I, I need to, I'm probably, maybe there's another way I can get my hand to do this, but in order to get this position, I have to like flatten here. And I'm so used to thinking of, of keeping a round object in my hand. So maybe that's the point of the exercise. Oh, I'm losing it. Oh, well, that was a disaster, but oh, well. 
Now. Now minor. Yeah, I'm gonna keep working. I'm gonna need a drink of water. I'm gonna keep working on that one. That one is uh, that one's a little bit tricky. Um, and, but I do find that it's I do find that I'm getting better at it. And I do think it's a useful motion to do. So, mm. oh, I gotta keep hydrated. Okay, onward. We are. On to sixth position harmonic songs. These are great. I uh, I love them all. I'm only going to do the last page right here. Sixth position refers to the sixth Raboth position. So those positions, uh, I'm not going to explain it in full here, but first position, this area, second, third, fourth, which we're just chilling out in, fifth, everything else sixth. So up here you have. triads that you can play and you can string those notes together. So you can play all kinds of songs like these. So I will play starting at E. Um, whoops, messed that one up. Have fun musically, I try anyway. Maybe put a little like fake vibrato on some of those notes. You know, I call it fake vibrato because you're only going up in pitch. Um, but you do get a nice sound. Uh, F right here. Center and G. Totally wrong season for this right now here in San Francisco, but or or anywhere I guess. Now that's not we haven't played yet. Root third fifth seventh with the third finger. That seventh is slightly out of tune. So it's, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, those are fun. That's a great area. Once you learn that register, I find that register to be relatively easy for people to pick up. And it's really cool to have all that uh, diatonic melodic potential up there. Uh, sixths, uh-oh, now on something I do, I do less well. <laughs> so um, the, uh, the Y for the exercise and conditioning of left hand finger strength for the exercise and mastery of precise tuning of major and minor sixth for the exercise sixths for the exercise and conditioning of a precise and strong hand frame and thumb position. Yeah, this is definitely and and pizzicatoing is great. Pits pitzing pizzicatoing. I don't think that's a word. Um, the made minor sixths are done with thumb and two, and the major sixths are done with thumb and three. In reality, you could probably do thumb two for all the stuff up high, but I'm going to do what he says, and I'm going to try my best to play in tune. I'm also going to play any available harmonics just to make sure that I'm being honest. So, and maybe I'll zoom in for this one. So we're starting here. Um, This will be thumb for the minor sixth right up there. That's that. Now we turn the pattern around, going down right here. Um, whoop. Oh, ho, 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 Jason. There we are, better. Okay. 
Okay, Saved by the Bell on that one. And then you do it on the D and the A strings, which I will not do right now. I, de- have, I did practice that over the week, and it's, I'm getting better. Okay, thirds. Why? For the exercise and conditioning of left-hand finger strength, for the exercise and mastery, for precise tuning of major and minor thirds. For the, I should stop so- talking so fast, but uh, for the exercise and conditioning of a precise and strong hand frame in the lower positions. Yeah, this is a lower position one, these thirds. Although it does go up into thumb position. It's a cool one. I've been doing some very A. I'm going to actually do a little better on six. I'll give myself an extra half a star. I'm going to just do what's written on the page, but I've done these variations and they're cool. I would definitely recommend doing them. But here we go. So. So this really does hand frame, you know, this span between one and four. This does require some, a little more strength. I'm always wary of using that word, but I think that applies here. I'm trying to think of, of having a good hand frame here, but not letting the weight rest on my thumb excessively. Or at all, ideally, but, you know. He flips around there. Wow, damn, I like this bow. Okay, um, that's a great exercise. Really fun. I probably played it too fast, but uh, that's that's me. I'm always trying to slow it down. Uh, 15 weeks of this, I'm <laughs> still working on it. Okay. Uh, trills, why? For the development, control, and exercise of clear and even trills. I never thought to practice trills this way, but I like the exercise. It's cool. Um, I'm going to just do the odd trills today, just for the sake of time. So we're going to start at the beginning. We'll go. Oops. Good, variation A. Whoops. Ah, dang it, listen. I'm used to doing the even trills. It reminds me of a Broadway musical for some reason, the like something a, a Sondheim thing or something. I don't know why. Okay, variation B. Good sevens. Oops, I gotta do that again. Sorry, this uh, this one uh, confuses me. That's why I'm not speaking on <laughs> this one because I need all my brain power. Oops, is that right? This is a tongue twister. Those odd ones, I, I, they, they're uh, they're great. I feel they're. I practice these exercises like I've been doing the last 15 weeks, and I go to practice other stuff later in the day, and I just feel like I'm more in focus and more dialed in. Like I had a really good workout at the gym, which is, uh, and it, this is not only a physical workout, which some of these are more on the physical side, which it indicates, um, but there's definitely uh, a, a lot of mindfulness training, which you've probably picked up if you've been watching this, and I've hopefully been focusing on it enough. Trampolines basketball. So, The basketball idea, I'll put my bass down to demonstrate this, is when you're bouncing the bow, it really is very similar to bouncing a basketball. Like you wouldn't bounce a basketball like this. That would not, uh, you would not have much control. You also wouldn't bounce a basketball 
completely rigid like that. That would also not. So you want to have that sort of middle ground with your hand. And so that's the basketball part of this. Maybe I should just do the why. For the development of sensitivity to the elasticity and balance of the hair and stick on your bow, for the study of the different motions required to bounce the bow at every point in the bow. Okay, so that, and at the other extreme, so that is the motion that you would do if you're bouncing like down here. I've never tried this on this bow, so this will be new for all of us. But hopefully that looks fairly similar to if I was actually bouncing a basketball or fake bouncing a basketball like I was just doing. Now, at the other end, the bow, it's like the bow's on a trampoline. Or it's like the, I'm sorry, that's the wrong analogy. It's like the string is a trampoline and the bow is coming and, and, and jumping and the rigidity yet some elasticity in the string is propelling just like a trampoline. That's why Dennis used that word. And so this exercise, um, Dennis has you start at the tip, which is really quite a, a great, I would highly recommend doing this in front of a mirror, by the way, to make sure that you're doing this straight. It's really easy to not do these kinds of things straight. Then uh, quickly, uh, you'll move between the frog and the tip. It's a great exercise. I think it's cool. Um, there are other ways to practice this. Last time I tried to get down on the floor and do it and my dog licked my face, so I didn't do it today. So trampolines, basketball, uh, Wow, I thought highly of myself on that one. I'm gonna ding myself a little because I didn't get through much. Okay, glowing tones. So is that, yeah, oh wow. Okay, so another glowing tones. I'll just play this one since I've talked through it. It's the best I've done, I think, on that note. Okay, and then we will close this one out. I like the way it does this with a little more silence. Okay, so that is it for week 15 of incredibly useful exercises. I had a comment on one of you the last videos, I can't remember what, someone essentially saying, hey, thanks for the motion sickness, Jagweed, which point taken. <laughs> Although I know if you're at the end here, you've you've sort of hopefully embraced the punk rock spirit of just trying to like put a camera in your head and do these sort of things. Uh, next week's the last one of these. I, I will probably go back to doing some more uh, not camera on my head videos. And I have all these topics people have suggested for um, things relating to vibrato, shifting, balancing the bass, all uh, flat hair versus uh, angled hair, uh, speed weight placement. I mean, the list goes on and on. I've been thinking, I've got this two octave scale project that's been simmering. I've got a whole bunch of stuff that, so I think I will um, put these camera on the head videos to rest after next week, but I might come back. Maybe I'll keep doing them forever. I don't, I don't know. But if you have an idea for something you'd like me to explore now that I'm almost done with incredibly useful exercises, either in this format or I've got good camera. Now, I mean, this is a good camera for what it is, but I have, I have good gear and I can get uh, more proper video, uh, no problem. So uh, let me know, leave a comment below if you've got a suggestion or if you'd rather email me, feedback at contrabaseconversations.com will get you in touch with me. So uh, thanks for hanging out. See you later.